Hey, thanks for watching Four Color Commentary. I'm Mark Allen, and this is a bit of a haul video. Uh, a few dollar comics and some pickups from an antique store just today, actually. And so uh, we're going to start with um, some uh, just the dollar comics. And uh, I always pick up what ifs. What ifs are interesting books. They were always interesting books to me, even before. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think what if uh, the what if television program on Disney Plus has made uh, them a little more appealing to collectors. But uh, I've always loved What If, from the very first issue, What If Spider-Man Joined the Fantastic Four, way back in 1970-whatever, six or eight or whatever. But um, <clears throat> this is a what, a what If story featuring Captain America. And in this story, Captain America becomes, uh, or uh, Steve Rogers becomes Captain America during the Civil War. And it has a, does have a Native American influence. He is a Native American. He is representing uh minorities there and and uh, this is actually a really cool story it's not uh not a lot of um politicizing or anything like that just a good just a good story and uh it's, the cover is the interior art is all right uh but the um story is great the cover is uh by um the guy who i want the guy who did the artwork for starman the main Starman artist uh, from the uh, 90s, and I want to say, his last name's Harris. I want to say Stephen Harris, but I'm not sure about that. But it's a beautiful cover, and uh, it is a good story. I've already read it. <clears throat> uh, I also finally found two issues of a mini series I'd been wanting to get for a while, primarily because of the Angel Medina art and because it tied into the first uh, Maestro story in a sense in the same world. And it's Abominations. Uh, I got number one. I already had number two. This is number one. And at number three, and so uh, a lot, I'm glad to have finally found those and to read those. I read those in the 90s. I don't remember much about them, but I remember liking the story, and um, so thought I'd reacquaint myself with it. Now this this one is also a dollar figure or a dollar a dollar comic. All of these are. Um, this is um, one of those comics that uh, I, you know I bought it for the cover. Uh, I probably shouldn't have, but I bought it for the cover. Because who doesn't like a good knockdown, drag out Hulk thing brawl, right? Well, I'm going to use this opportunity to steer you away from this this book. This is Fantastic Four number six hundred and nine. Uh, the tag says five dollars, but it was a dollar, a one dollar book. Um, this fight lasts not even a full page, and uh, so uh, as as great as the cover looks and as exciting as it looks, uh, pass it by when you see it. And uh, don't don't spend your hard-earned money on it. I'll just take that for what it's worth. Um, Stormwatch Volume Two, Number One, which is I was, I've been looking for that one uh, because that is part of the Ellis run. Warren Ellis and Phil Jimenez was was doing the art. Phil Jimenez was doing the art, and Warren Ellis was doing the writing. So I've been looking for that. Glad to finally find that. These last I'm gonna save for last because they were great dollar finds. Um, <clears throat> I always get hero illustrated if i can if i find a copy of hero illustrated uh, a lot of times wizard wizard as well i'll pick it up for a buck uh, just be, just for the articles and the history value the uh it's just kind of a neat uh reread in a lot of cases because i read most of these when they came out and this talks about of course the uh marvel dc uh, it also talks it talks about actually about both marvel dc um batman punisher crossovers that happened back in the day the one penciled by John Romita Jr. as well as the one penciled by Barry Kitz, Kitson. And so uh, anyway, can't wait to read that. Now, this is a, one of those obscure um, first issue indie comics. Uh, I have number two. I finally found number one, The New Humans. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I mean, I'm, I'll read it at some point. But, uh, you know, I just, just, I like these. I like to find these uh, 80s um you know, it is. I like. I just like to find these '80s indie covers or these '80s indie books, and uh, you know, sometimes they're fun, sometimes they're hard to read, but sometimes they're just. They're, you know, they've got the the writer and the artist. Uh, they were just really hungry, and so you can see that in the telling of the stories. And um, so anyway, uh, got glad to find that. Now here was a kind of a couple of cool dollar finds. This first one is the Uncanny X Men. Number 322, Who Stopped Juggernaut? Um, this actually turns out to be uh, the first mention, I want to say, of, of um, oh, I just forgot his name, Onslaught. There you go, Onslaught. Because 
when they fight, when they get to, to Juggernaut, uh, you see him flying through the air, and uh, he lands, and they get to him, they're like, you know, they're wondering who could have done this to Juggernaut, to Cain Marco. And uh, he says something to the effect of Onslaught is coming, or, you know, so Onslaught uh, beat up the Juggernaut. And so it's just kind of a cool, what, one of the reasons I got it too was also the fantastic Tom Grummet artwork. You all know how I feel about Grummet, and I like his work, and uh, he just, he's just a great, great comic book artist. I also found a great um, <clears throat> first. It is, uh, it's part, it is part two of a three-part story, so I'm going to have to find the other two parts before I read it. But I went ahead and snagged it uh, simply because it is a first appearance of Tony Stark's uh, Thor Buster armor, and so uh, I found that for a buck, so I was glad to find that. Uh, it's not highly sought after right now, though it is considered a first. It is considered uh, somewhat collectible, and so uh, and it's hopefully going to be a good story. Uh, Mike Grell is the writer. I believe Alan Davis does the penciling, and so uh, it says Davis on there anyway, but at least, so I'm guessing that it was Alan Davis. Um Anyway, I'm hoping that that will be a great read uh, once I get the other two parts. Uh, well, the first part, I think, is in Thor, and then the third part is in an issue of Aven the Avengers. Now, the rest of these, um, next, these next few, I should say, are additions to my Wolverine run. I've been looking for the, uh, looking to get the uh, Hama um, Qbert Wolverine run to get, to get the whole thing. And what I have here is I have issue number... 90 love that cover uh, the interaction with the logo um, Knock down drag out with uh, Sabretooth and Wolverine Whoops, I got another one there. Okay, so uh, let's see. So issue number 90 <clears throat> Put that over there Issue number 97, I believe Yes, issue number 97 Issue number 101. Okay. <clears throat> Issue number 103. Guest starring Electra. Issue number 104. Issue number 106. Great black and white cover. Love that. Love when they do that. The red on the black and white, just great stuff. And then issue number 108, kind of a same deal there, red and black and white. And love that. So I am knocking down, you know, slowly but surely knocking down that Wolverine run. Now these next two, I was really excited to find these in a dollar box because anytime I can find these in a dollar box, I pick them up. I'm trying to get the whole run of these, but I'm not hurrying it. I'm not paying big prices. I'm just finding them cheaply as they go along, and that is Marvel Classics Comics. And I have here issue number 34, Robin Hood. And uh, let me see. We're talking about a lot of different, um, I believe. Um, well, no, we've got some great uh, Filipino artists involved in this one. Rudy Messina and Alfredo Alcala are the artists. And just to give you a little idea of some of the art in there uh, just great to Filipino believe that both of those gentlemen were part of what was called the tribe and um, <clears throat> let me find a good here we go very cool illustration there so it's gonna be a lot of fun I think and uh, and then so I found that that's uh, Marvel Classics Comics number 34 and then also found this one actually came without a bag and it was in even better condition. Um, Marvel Classics Comics number 36, The Christmas Story. Uh, or The Christmas Carol, I should say. I'm sorry, Christmas Story. Thinking of the movie. Uh, you're going to shoot your eye out. Okay, that's not in here. Okay, not in here. Christmas Carol. Okay, and so um, Story of Scrooge. And um, this one is actually, this is the one I was thinking of. Doug Munch does the, uh, or Munch or Munch or whatever, however you say his name. He's the writer, or he adapts it, and then the artists were many. They call it diverse hands, or many hands in some, in some Marvel titles. You'll see that diverse hands, or many hands, just means they had to have a lot of artists help them uh, get this done. But I love the cover, lots of great gloss on there, and uh, so anyway, there's that. So there's the dollar, the dollar scores. A um, couple of um, 
couple of flea market finds today and uh, these have both uh, issue number 14 of the Overstreet comic book price guide. This is 1984-85. Got a Katie Keene cover on there. Okay. And then you and then I also um, have issue number 15, 85, 86, I believe that's right. Or is it 8485? One was 8045, one was 8586. Yeah, 8586. And um, great CC Beck cover, uh, which you did, I believe, for that book. Uh, I like these because they are um, their reference, their pure reference from the articles written uh, to the beautiful um, color. Uh, color photos of old books um, that you find in two different places in these books and then um, and then also the prices see what books were what prices they were commanding back then as compared to now it's enough to make you cry really um, but uh, you know so just I like these as as a little little slice of history and reference and uh, just really like getting these now I paid I actually paid seven bucks a piece for these they're soft cover some people would have passed those by. I almost did, but here's the thing. I looked on eBay, and that was the best deal. I, I couldn't find a deal that good on eBay for these. Uh, and so because, because even when I found one that was comparable, there was shipping involved, and these are heavy. And uh, I don't know why, but a lot of people don't ship the media mail. But uh, So anyway, um, I was glad to get those. Seven bucks a piece, so $14 for those. Great history there, and uh, happy to have them. Now, this next thing... <laughs> it is comic related. It, it is comic related because there have it's it is a Universal Studios Monsters item. I went ahead and got it and thought I'm going to open it up on uh, on the video because I'd never I'd never seen these before. This is a Burger King Kids Club item, um, and I can't find a date on it. I didn't think to look for a date. 1997 Burger King Kids Club item. I am going to find. All of these. I found out, I didn't even know these existed. I wasn't really eating much Burger King back in the 90s, uh, but I didn't know these existed, but they do. And so I'm gonna crack this one open. This is this is the Wolfman, okay? Uh, this is the Wolfman from uh, Universal Studios Monsters. Who doesn't love Universal Studios Monsters? Wolfman, Frankenstein's monster, the mummy, Dracula, creature from the Black Lagoon. He is in that, that collection as well. Okay, so there's the, there's the, ooh, looks like there's a, a sticker that comes with. There's the, the uh, illustration, the Wolfman. Collect all, okay, collect all four. So you have Dracula, uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, Wolfman, and Frankenstein's monster there, okay? So, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be looking for those. And um, here is, nice, the sticker, Wolfman. Probably slap that on a comic box. Uh, who knows? Um, ooh, or on my laptop. Uh, okay, so here, so there's the, uh, the the little decals and stuff. Oh, nice. Okay, so here's he comes in this little crate. Okay, you open it up. And there's the, there went the Wolfman. Luckily, Burger King built him tough, and there he is. Very cool. I, I like that. I like these. And uh, I'm going to look for the other ones. I was glad to find, find that for a buck. And uh, you've seen those little boxes of McDonald's and fast food type toys at the flea markets and the antique stores. And that's where I found him for one dollar. I got me. And he's no, he's, you heard him just hit the chair. I mean, and there's no scuff on him. He's kind of heavy. He's heavy plastic. That's nice. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to buy the rest of those or get, find the rest of those and, uh, Count myself lucky to have Wolfman in his little. We'll pull out this one. And there you go. So there's the haul, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like the video. Comment on the video. Uh, but certainly, um, like I say, if you haven't subscribed, appreciate you doing that, and appreciate the new subscribers I've gotten lately. But anyway, other than that, uh, keep on having fun. Keep on collecting what makes you happy. Keep on enjoying the hobby. And thanks for watching Four Color Commentary.